Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to cover tutorial two, basic photo corrections. Just like last time, first thing we're going to do is expand this and download the 02 start file. Now this time we can't just double click on it, we have to open it in Photoshop. So we're going to open up Photoshop, come over to open, and then go to our downloads and open it from there. That is again zero to start. So we're going to be retouching this picture, cropping it, rotating it, learning about image resolution, some tonal ranges, learning some of the spot healing and patch aware along with clone stamp, some really useful tools that you'll use throughout the rest of the class in Photoshop. Here's a sample of what the picture is going to look like when we're finished, minus the watermark text at the bottom. So you can see the tone's been adjusted, the big bend in the photo has been removed, one whole person's been taken out. There's been a lot we're doing to this, so let's jump right into it. A lot of strategies for retouching pictures, and every picture is going to be a little different depending on what your end goal is. Some pictures need a lot more work, where others just need a few little touch-up things. One of the easiest things to do when you're starting is to duplicate your background layer. The easiest way to do this is Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. That way if we screw this up, we have the original one to go back to. So we want to make sure we're on layer one to work with. You also want to make sure you're working with proper resolution. Resolution can be checked under image, image size, and then your resolution for this image by default is 240. We'll talk about changing that to 300 and working with a 300 resolution in future projects. Depending on what you want to do with cropping overall tonal adjustments and finalizing with sharpening is going to determine what you do with the rest of your project. Now, resolution and image size has a lot to do with screen resolution, pixels per inch, or DPI dots per inch. If we would zoom in super, super far, those little dots that you see on screen, those are pixels. You have so many pixels per inch, PPI. You also have so many dots per inch when you go to print. Now, if I double click my magnifying glass, it takes me back to home screen mode. You can notice my rulers here when I zoom in, how tiny these actually are. They are super, super small. Generally, we wanna work with a 300 resolution per inch picture because that's just industry standard. So I'm gonna come up to image, image size and just go ahead and change this to 300 right now hit OK. Notice it just changed your file size a little bit. It won't change your width and your height dimensions at all. Now it looks like it zoomed it out a lot, but the reality is still the exact same size. It just has higher pixel dimensions. In Photoshop, you also have different color modes that you can work in. Image mode shows you the different ones. RGB, red, green, blue is what we see on screen. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black is generally what we print to. Grayscale is black and white. Sometimes you'll find index images off the internet that you can't edit like we did over here with our background layer and you just need to change the image mode, but that's for later on. Just wanna make, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do this picture is rotate and crop. So I'm gonna come over here to my toolbar and I'm gonna separate these. I'm gonna find my crop tool. Crop tool is going to allow you to straighten and there's multiple ways you can do this. You can bring your cursor out to the edge and rotate and try to eyeball it and line it up with that grid pattern that pops up. Or you can hit the straighten button up top here and click, a, click and hold a straight part of your picture and it will automatically straighten your picture out. So I'm gonna go accept that change. Then next, I'm gonna select ratio up top and I'm gonna select width and height ratio. Now here I can type in my resolution if you have not already changed it to 300 and I'm gonna change it to seven by seven. So make sure you type in seven inches by seven inches. And then I'm gonna grab my corners and I'm gonna pull this down and crop right to the edge of my picture. We're gonna get rid of all the stuff around the outside. It's okay if we cut a little bit of the picture off. So that is good. Now we're gonna hit the accept button or the return key on the keyboard to accept the change. We're gonna adjust the color tone of the image. You'll use the curves and levels adjustments layer to remove the color casting and adjust the color and tone of this image. While this stuff seems pretty complicated, it's not that bad once you get the hang of it. So we're gonna first come over here to the adjustments panel, double click on that. We are then going to click on curves and this will add a curves adjustment here to our layers panel. I'm gonna minimize swatches so we can see how all this stuff works. I'm gonna come over to 
the left part of the properties and I'm going to find the white point tool, which is this one here, which selects sample white points. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this little girl's dress right here and click a white area, which should adjust the overall picture to have a little bit brighter. Now the color gets really weird when I zoom out like that, but that's not really that big of a deal. Next, we are going to add a levels adjustment. So I'm gonna come back to adjustments. I'm going to click the levels panel. And here you have three different triangles. You have a black triangle, which represents shadows, a gray triangle, which represents midtones, and a white triangle, which represents highlights. So you can see there's a lot of highlights in this picture because we've got a lot of bright colors here. You generally don't want to adjust your midtones. You generally only want to adjust your shadows and your highlights. Now, we have a lot of highlights, so let's just make this a little bit less to bring in more midtones there and adjust those to make that a little bit darker. And again, we can turn this on and off to see what changes we've made. And that was before real quick. And this is very fast after to get some simple color tone adjust adjustments. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten all of these layers. That way we don't have to mess with the four different settings and everything else going on. So up to layer, down to flatten image, that's gonna merge everything together. And just like we did before, so we have a backup copy to work off of, we're gonna duplicate this. Now, last time we did a Command J, if you wanna right click and duplicate, that is another way to do it, but notice it's three clicks. So a Command J is a really easy, simple hotkey. All right, we're gonna use the spot healing brush to get rid of the crease that goes right down the middle of the picture. The spot healing brush tool quickly removes blemishes and other imperfections. It samples pixels from around the area that you're trying to retouching, and it automatically adjusts textures, lighting, transparencies, and shading. Photoshop's pretty powerful when it's trying to do the work for you. Sometimes this tool works really well, other times it does not. Let's start with the zoom tool, and we'll zoom in on an area up here. Then we will come over to the spot healing tool. It's the one that looks like a band-aid. You'll notice there's other tools underneath here, but right now we want spot healing brush. We're gonna set our brush size to about 30. We will change our hardness to 100. And we wanna make sure that content aware is selected so Photoshop knows that it needs to pick from surrounding colors. Now you don't wanna do huge drags at one time to make a correction, so let's just do small passes and we wanna make sure that we hit all of the creases. So the sky's really easy to do, but once it gets down into here is where the magic starts to happen. And like I said, Photoshop's a pretty powerful tool and the fact that this content aware spot healing brush works as well as it does is pretty impressive. So we'll go the whole way down here, continuing to do small clicks and drags making sure we get the entire crease. Once we're done, we'll double click back on the zoom tool or the hand tool to see the full picture. And very quickly, we went from crease, no crease. Now notice I missed a spot at the top, so we will come back up here. Just continue to get that. That looks really good. Next, we're gonna use the patch tool to remove this young individual that's not part of this family. It's, you know, something you can do if somebody's photo bombing you, or if you just wanna get rid of your brother that you don't like. So we're gonna come over to the tool panel next and we're gonna pick the patch tool. The patch tool is used to remove large unwanted elements from an image. You use the content aware patch to remove unrelated people and things from pictures. So first we're gonna select this, then we're gonna come up to the patch dropdown menu and select content aware. From here, we're gonna make sure that our structure type is four and we have a little slider to adjust that. And this ranges from one to seven, which allows the tool to select how much is it gonna switch and change once we start dragging around the person. So next we wanna drag the content patch or the patch tool around the boy and his shadow. It isn't necessary to be exact, but you wanna be pretty tight to the body. So we don't wanna be like way outside. Just gonna take our time and go around. 
With that completed, we're going to position the pointer within the area that we just selected and drag it to the left. Photoshop will display a preview of what it's going to replace it with. Now, if we move too far, we're going to start copying that person over. We don't want to necessarily do that. So we're just going to slide it a little bit to the left. And when we let go, Photoshop automatically will adjust what we put here and kind of get rid of the void. Next, we're going to select deselect or command D to remove the selection. So again, very quickly, we went from there to there. Now that one doesn't look as great because you have the repetitiveness here, end of the building, but we can't make up pixels from anything. We'll continue to adjust this as we move forward. Now we're going to go over and zoom into the spot that we just edited. And like I said, there's these little spots that are repetitive, like this part of the building copied here and this part copied here. We're going to get rid of those with the clone stamp. Now the clone stamp is one of the most powerful tools in the program, but it takes a little bit more manual work to do it. So clone stamp uses pixels from one area of an image to replace the pixels in another part of the image. But you can't just click and drag. It won't work. It gives you this error. So let's make our brush a little bit bigger. Remember, right brackets go larger, left brackets go smaller. We also want a soft brush to use so we can lower our hardness so it blends a little bit nicer. And we want to select part of the image that we want to replace it with. So this part I don't want because it was there. I'm going to hold the Option key down on a Mac, the Alt key down on a PC, click that's going to select my source point then i'm going to let go and when i bring it over here it's going to copy pixels from that crosshair area over so we can do that all the way down through here getting rid of this repetitive pixels that looks kind of fake now it's going to take a little bit of uh coercing to do up here and to make sure that everything looks good on the building so i'm going to reselect here and then bring these over and just kind of eyeball that contour and drag it straight down and then I'm going to let go of my mouse and I'm going to continue to bring it over and then go back up and it's just going to copy and paste the rest of that building right over there. Now we're getting that weird line right through the middle that's because it has the edge of the, the page that we actually copy and paste it over. So if you can help it don't click on the edge and just try to make sure that it looks a little bit more natural. I'm going to click down here on this, and if we have to, we can go back and clean it up by zooming in even further and then making our brush a little bit tinier and clicking some of these areas to get rid of this. But don't spend tons of time on it. We're just seeing that you know how to do clone stamping and that we can clean some of this stuff up. But it should look pretty natural, and it shouldn't look like we made too many adjustments to it. Again, before and after. Now you also notice there's some random spots in the sky up here. We can use the clone stamp to easily get rid of those too. Now could you use one of the other tools that we learned about too? Sure, but let's just practice with this, the clone stamp tool. Click to select, let go, and then we can continue to just do this. Now you gotta always pay attention to where that crosshair is because if you drag it you're gonna start copying other parts that you don't want. And if you do that just Control zero or Z or Command Z to get rid of it. And every once in a while, you might need to reselect where you're picking your source point from to clean up your image. Notice this weird circle over here. We can use almost any one of these tools to clean that up. So let's try to heal heal it with the spot healing brush. Let's drag it right over top and it automatically pulled from where I previously selected, but it did a really nice job blending and getting rid of that. The last thing we're gonna do to this picture is sharpen up the image, so I'm gonna come over here and zoom in on the boy. Then we're gonna go up to Filter, Noise, and Dust and Scratches, and we want the radius to be one and the threshold to be zero. That's gonna remove some of the dust and scratches within the picture. Then we wanna go up to Filter, Sharpen, and we want to do a smart sharpen on it. It's gonna show us a little preview here of what that's gonna do. We wanna make sure that lens blur is chosen in the remove menu. Remove menu, lens blur, yep, that's what we want. And we're gonna click okay.
now we're done with that project as well. So the next thing we need to do is just do a file save as. Well, there is one key thing that I forgot here. We need to watermark it. So let's, with the text tool, come over and create a text box. Let's just put your name down here on it. And let's change the opacity of it a little bit. You can pick whatever font you want, whatever color you want. It really doesn't matter. It's just going to be my way of stamping it. So now we do a file save as. And we're going to change the file name. The T2. And I'm going to also switch the file format to Photoshop in case I need to come back and edit it further. I'm going to make sure that I save that into my Google Drive. And if you are smart, you are creating a file for each individual project that we have made so far in class. You're not just dumping everything into your Google Drive. I have a lot more than what you guys are going to need to have. But if we take a look how I have things organized, there is my tutorial lesson two. I'm going to place that right in there. Now there's also bonus for this project if you would like to try to do it. And that bonus is located in the file on the website. And it is the bike TIFF. So if we expand that and download that one as well, the extra credit does not take very long. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, but it's also a useful skill. So again, just select it. We should be able to do double click to open it, download the image, open it in Photoshop, file open and bike is in my downloads with this we're just going to do some simple color changes so in the adjustments panel we're going to select the black and white filter it's going to make the entire picture black and white and then from here we can choose to tint it if we want and we could change the color of the entire picture. So this is one way to do a color change. And as long as it's different than the original, um, I'm pretty fine with that. You're just going to submit your color tinted changed picture to me and get some bonus points for this to do a little bit of extra. I think I like the original sepia tone. I think that looks pretty good. All right, do a file save as, and you can submit that as extra credit as well. Hope you enjoyed tutorial two. When you're finished, submit your stuff on Classroom, and let's move on to tutorial three.